Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, so we just got in the mail two of these uh, Temgat 100 amp hour lithium batteries. Um, they're pretty cool. They have like a little display screen on them. It's kind of hard to see in the sun, but it shows you the battery life, their charge state, and then it'll show you your cycles and voltage and you can change the pages and it'll show you like how many amp hours are in the battery, the temperature. Um, it'll show you the individual cell charges. So um, right now they're going to be in battery boxes on the tongue of the trailer. So we don't, we don't really need to see this much. Um, but it's kind of a cool feature for the, if you did want to use something like that. So I got two of them. Uh, and we're going to take out the interstate battery that came on the trailer. That's just your regular deep cycle lead acid battery. And we're going to install those. So I'll have to make some cables to do that so we can connect them together. And I got some one uh copper wire here that I'm going to use for that. And if you're going to upgrade to lithium batteries, you need to make sure that you have the right kind of converter and chargers for the lithium batteries so most new trailers have that so like this one it um, has an auto detection so it'll detect that it's a lithium battery and charge it the way lithium battery should be charged then up here on the solar charge controller you can just select the battery type and change it to lithium up there once that's done so uh, yeah, we'll get these put together and installed and see how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is shut off my battery switch here, which should kill everything, all the power to the battery. I'll shut that off. And then we are going to disconnect this battery and get it out of the way and put the other batteries in place. So I can kind of get an idea of how I need to make my cables. Alright, so I got my batteries in place. And I faced them backwards so the negative and positive terminals would be close to each other in the middle here. Because the way it was originally set up with one battery in the center of this tray, it would be hard for the original wiring to reach all the way over to the other end to connect to the positive terminal up front here. So this works out good and uh, now I just need to make cables to connect that negative to this negative and that positive to this positive. And then when I hook up the wires from the trailer I will connect to the positive on this battery and the negative on this battery. Um, they say that when you put two batteries together like that, it helps keep all the cells balanced better if you have power pulling, like your positive pulling off one battery and your ground going to the other battery. So that's what we're going to do. Alright, so I have my, my two cables that I cut here for the positive and negative. And I made it so they can kind of hang down a little bit and go straight up into the lids on the battery box so that they'll tuck up in here nicely when we put them in. Um, so I have some crimp fittings somewhere here. I got all my stuff set out. Oh, up here. That are made for the one at cable. And it has a 3 8 I believe. Yeah, 3 8 hole on it. So I'm going to check that against the screws that came with the battery. Just make sure that'll work. Yep, it should work good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put the cable ends together. I have uh, these. This cable crimp kit is kind of cheap, but it works good if you're not doing a lot of cable making. So 
like I've made, made a handful of battery cables since I've had it. If you're doing it all the time, you'd want something better. But this is your crimp tool here. And you see, I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, both of these are set on one slash zero for one out wire. So I just got to cut the uh, coating back a little bit here and put the end on and you want to cut it back so that the cable goes all the way to the bottom but you don't want any coating inside your crimp so i'm going to do that and get these put together and then i'll show you the next step okay so for just an example of what i was talking about with how you want to strip your cable back if you can see here there's the strip cable and that's all the way in and when you push it down all the way the edge of the cable coating goes right up to the edge of the crimp fitting but it doesn't go into it and then that's exactly what you want because then you slide your heat shrink tube over that after you crimp it and then you can seal that up and have a nice waterproof connection that'll last for a long time all right and here is what it looks like when it's in the crimp tool so you see that crimps the cable into place and it creates like a cold weld because this is a uh, pure copper wire so once it's put under the pressure of the crimp it kind of makes it like one solid piece in there because of the force it has and that's what you want so we have to get this apart here it's kind of hard to do this with one hand so you can see it's crimped nice and even all the way around and then like i said you slide this over like that and then you heat it up with a heat gun or lighter or a torch and it'll shrink right down tight to the wire and the copper fitting um like i said this is pure copper wire it's not like coated aluminum wire or anything and that's what you want to use for any type of power system no matter what size wire you're using um i can leave a link to this wire as well as the fittings and the crimp tool and everything down in the description of the video if you guys are interested in it um it will be an amazon affiliate link so if you make a purchase we'll get a small commission from it and it'll help us out and we greatly appreciate it all right so i got all my cable ends crimped on and now i'm gonna go ahead and try to shrink this shrink on it don't really need a, a lot of heat for it so i not sure how that's showing up but once i get them done i'll show you guys close up like i said you want to try to avoid burning the heat shrink sometimes it might get a little bit but This is, this came with, the cable uh, lugs came with heat shrink, and it looks like pretty good stuff. Kind of, it's the kind that has like a sealant in it when you melt it, so it's like an extra layer of protection from moisture getting into your fittings and corroding your connections. Get these all done and then we'll get those installed and hook the trailer up to the batteries and make sure everything's still working the way it should and they're taking a charge and this will be done all right so i have all my heat shrink set in place and 
shrunk onto the cables. So you can kind of see that there's like a glue that's heat activated inside of the heat shrink that came with these lugs. So I thought that was really cool because that'll definitely, especially for something that's going to be somewhat exposed to the weather, that will definitely make these cables last a lot longer and keep everything nice and protected. So like I said, I'll leave uh, links to the cable lugs, to the cables, to the tools I'm using, everything down in the description of the video if you want to try doing this yourself. It's not that hard. Um, I pretty much learned all of it from watching videos on YouTube myself. Um, there's way better channels out there with better explanations of how to do all this stuff than what I have here. But I'm just kind of trying to get this done before we take off on our trip. So uh, stick around and we'll get the batteries hooked up. All right, guys. So I did one run into one small problem. So the the terminal screws that came with the new batteries aren't quite long enough to handle the uh, lug that's already on the trailer for the power inverter, um, plus a couple little terminal lugs there, and the thick lugs on the new cables I made to link the two batteries together. So I'm going to run down to the hardware store real quick and pick up some longer screws and then we'll get it together. Okay guys, so I just got back from Ace. I got some longer machine screws. I ended up getting M8 by 25 size screws. Um, they should work pretty good. I don't really like stacking a lot of stuff directly on the terminals like that, but just to get this together quick I'm going to do that for now and when I have more time I'm going to probably end up using some bus bars so that way I just have one cable going from each battery to a bus bar and then have everything else connected to the bus bar and that will be a lot better that way but um, I don't plan on keeping the batteries on the tongue of the trailer forever either I want to move them into a spot inside that's kind of underneath one of the couches that's hard to get to so we don't use it for anything else really so i want to kind of move all my power stuff in there because with lithium batteries they're not vented and there's no gases or anything that come out of them so you can put them inside they don't have to be outside so that's my plans for the future but it's starting to rain a little bit so i'm going to try to get the cables on and get this thing back together so i can get ready to go to work and i'll show it to you guys when it's all put back together All right guys, so I have all my cables hooked up. So as you can see, I have all my positives going to this battery and then the negative from that battery connected to the negative to this battery and all my negatives going to this battery. And you can see the, kind of see the screen there. It shows that it's charging. Um, it's about four and a half amps coming from the converter. I do have it plugged in right now, just to a 110 plug through uh, a little pigtail adapter here into an extension cord. So I don't know if it would charge more if it was on 30 amp or not. But I also have the 200 watt solar panel and I switched that over to lithium. But it's not very sunny right now so I'm only getting about 0.9 amps from that when I looked at it. But that's what's nice about having a bigger battery bank like this is this is 200 amp hours worth of battery so even if you don't have a lot of charge going into it it'll last a long time um our last battery that was on here was a 80 amp hour battery but it was lead acid so you could only use about 50 percent of that so you really only had 40 amp hours of usual usable battery so we went from that to 200 amp hours of usable battery. So we should be set for uh, weekends or even weeks off grid pretty much. And if we need to, we can add more solar panels or maybe get a portable panel that we could use with either camper or with tent camping or whatever we're doing. So um, thanks for watching and I hope you guys stick around and I hope you're enjoying the content with the new trailer and well like i said we'll be getting out and using it pretty quick here 
and we'll have a lot of videos from our travels with it too. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and uh, stick around for the next one. Bye.